Hi, my name is Justin Miller, and today I am here with Tim Doherty to discuss live multi-track multi-audio functionality that you can do with Wowza Streaming Engine. I'm really excited about this. Tim, thank you for joining me. Um, you are the man who knows all about this. I'm just going to kind of hand it off to you here, uh, but hopefully you can tell us a little about this and how we're currently utilizing it. Absolutely. The problem we're working to solve here is when an event producer or promoter or someone who's doing you know, anything from concerts to conventions, those sort of um, training seminars, those sort of engagements that are live and they're high profile. Right. And a lot of these events will have compliance that requires multiple audio simulcasts. So that means the primary speaker would be English and then maybe they have German and French that they need to have live somebody speaking a second track as well as compliance requirements for closed captions. So a user could literally watch the video with a French simulcast and a German closed caption, and it's all live. So the magic that Wowza Engine, Wowza Streaming Engine is doing is synchronizing all of these streams into one player. So again, that live event producer doesn't have to say, here's the web page if you're you know, in France and here's the web page if, if you're in, in, in Catalan, you know, it's, it's one player fits all. So that's, right. that's generally what we're working to set up here, Justin. And I'm imagining this uh, not only for things like large uh, corporate presentations, but I'm sure this is great for government use on a federal level. Absolutely. Any use case imaginable where there are diverse populations of people representing different languages around the globe. Um, so it's by no means limited to event producers. Right. Can I give you guys a, a quick demo? Yeah, let's definitely see this. I'm, I'm excited to see something where we can have audio be changed and have caption option be changed. Definitely. So right now I started with just a blank page in or a, an empty application in Wowza Streaming Engine, meaning when I mean, when I say empty, I mean that there are not any streams coming in. Right. Uh, it's by no means empty from a standpoint of configuration. Um, our Wowza Professional Services Organization, uh, a lot of work with a solutions architect working in Java and in the code in Wowza. In the back end, they've done a ton of work and that's already all set up here. But what I want to show you is just how it works. And so to give you the lay of the land, the primary encoder I'm using today is open broadcast okay. um, OBS, the infamous OBS. And right now it's playing a loop of a speaker um, from a, from a conference. So this right. is typically the type of content that this would be used for. I'm going to go ahead and just start the stream. So, you so see we're just imagining right here, we have a live presentation stream with the standard audio that it comes with in this case, English. Correct. So this is the actual audio and video from this encoder um, so this is just a conventional, regular audio signal with video going in. And you can see that the encoder one is connected and there is a convention behind this. So encoder one is convention connected. Wowza is creating a source and it's creating the standard definition and low definition. So that's, that's all, you know, really standard streaming over here. I have another computer running in San Jose, California, which is far away. And that is an example. Often the interpreter is not on site, right? Right. Maybe using an interpreting service, et cetera. So, you know, I'm in central California, this computer could be representing somebody in San Jose, and I'm just going to go ahead and start this stream. And right now it's, it's sending a placeholder video, which will be ignored. It's only 500 kilobytes, but the primary is it's sending that German language, okay. that audio language. So it's connected. So if I go back over to Wowza streaming engine now, we can see that encoder two is connected and it's not being transcoded because we have some parameters in there to not transcode it. And there's the encoder two audio that's going to be pushed downstream. That's synchronized awesome. with encoder one. And then I have another one, Justin, um, real quick here. Let me grab it. It's running um, on Mac OS, also remote. And I'm just going to start this stream because we've already seen this here. And you'll see that now encoder three is connected. So I have all of these streams running. I'm just going to go play it. So right here, I'm using um, our strategic player selection, our partner, Theo player. Um, this is going to be playing a stream from this server on this port. Um, it's actually grabbing an SMIL file, which is a manifest that has all of these streams properly formatted. And that's all done behind the scenes, by the way. Our pro serve people set that up when we implement. But that wasn't and the only right reason now, I passed on Warby Parker. 
That's the English. They were also full of doubts. They had but if I want to switch over to French, that made me doubt. You now hear a French simulcast. Right. That's coming from, you know, this, this, this device over here. Right. And then Alors, maybe I want to switch over uh, to German. Pour les de réserver leurs vacances. And insgesamt, wenn ich das Bild anschaue, you know, I'm, I'm playing from this device here. And notice that I'm in the same player. Um, it, it's, it's very native. I have my adaptive bitrate just like normal. And But wait, there's more. We also have live captions coming in, which are being simulated. Okay. So if I wanted to turn on the English caption, um, this is just counting up as for demonstration purposes. Right, right, right. For, not, we don't have the actual captions for this. For Dutch, etc. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's the that's the outcome. Um, awesome. It's just it's just an end to end multi audio multi caption stream, and it works exactly as described. Now, just just for some context, um, for a particular customer, we set this up with eleven languages. Oh wow! Eleven live encoders going into Wowza, and we also had eleven captionists that were. Um, working real time, kind of like okay. a court reporter, right. punching in live captions into Wowza, injecting it into the video, and then you end up with this very broad um, end product. Wow! So yeah, that's I know it's short and simple, but that's the demo. No, that's great to see, and I can see a lot of uses for something like this. Um, I'm sure that there are many companies that are interested in having an opportunity to when they are doing like a corporate presentation being able to have one that a worldwide audience can understand what's going on. Definitely. It, there, as we mentioned before, there's a lot of compliance involved, a lot of convenience. Um, you know, Traditionally, people have had maybe a page for each language or culture represented. This gets everything in one page. And oh, by the way, it works, works on mobile as well. So it's a very cap capable platform. Yeah. Field Player actually enables this, um, but it is, it is available on other player platforms as well, standard H HTML5, HLS players, et cetera. But okay. Theo Player was very helpful in, in optimizing this. Right, right. So there are definitely other options if somebody wanted to use JW Player or some others that have these options built in, they can use them. Well, hey, very definitely. Tim, thank you for showing me this. I really do appreciate it. I think this is a fantastic function that is part of Wowza Streaming Engine. And for anybody who's interested in knowing more about our other functions for Wowza Streaming Engine, please do check us out at wowza.com.